Hey guys, it's May May and welcome to another Sunday Devotion. And today, I'm talking to you about something I think is kind of interesting. It's called living in the rear view. Now, what do you think I mean by that? That rear view mirror. How many of you guys don't use your rear view? Some people don't. How many of you guys don't use it anymore because you have that backup camera, right? I got one of those backup cameras and how many of you don't use that? How many of you guys don't use your side mirrors? Think about it. If you ever taught somebody to drive, you're like, look in your rear view, look behind you, look in that mirror and make sure you always know what's around you. I remember when I was in, um, not driver's ed, but um, I can't, I think we were in like a class in high school and I remember them saying, you should look ahead for this long and in the mirror for this long and here and then there and then here, but you should always know your surroundings, right? That's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. We get in situations and we're thinking, what are you doing, God? Why am I in this place right now? Where am I headed? We want to look forward. It's almost like we put these blinders on where we don't want to look to the side. We just want to look forward at what is God doing? Tell me now, clue me in now, right? We always want to do that. But it reminds me of scripture. So the scripture I want us to look at today is from John chapter 13. And it's where Jesus is in the room with the disciples and he knows his time is about to come. Actually, it says he knows his hour is about to be here. And he gets up after dinner to start washing the disciples' feet. He puts a towel around his waist and he fills a basin with water and he heads to Simon Peter. And when he gets to Simon Peter, he says, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I'm doing, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. And Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I don't wash you, you have no share with me. So Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. So then he said, I see if I'm going to have a part of you because of this process, I want you to do all of me, right? Jesus goes on to talk about why it's only his feet later. You can read that in John chapter 13. But what I want us to head back to is where Jesus says, what I'm doing now, you don't understand, but later you will. This is kind of where we are in our life. We're driving through life, right? We're just headed down our road and we're thinking, oh, this is where I'm going. This is where I'm going. And then there's a detour and detours hit us right? They don't come, like detours don't come up in this little soft way. Have you ever noticed this? There's not a whole lot of detour signs until you hit the detour, right? Then the signs happen. It's kind of how Jesus is too, right? So we hit this detour, we turn, and we start going, oh, what are you doing? What's happening here, Lord? Where am I going? How do I traverse this? We start to kind of panic. I don't know what to do. We get this moment where we're like, I don't, I don't know which way to go or what to do. And that's not true, right? And I'll tell you why it's not true. Because we have to look in the rear view. We have to remember God's brought us through so much before. He's taught us through everything he's brought us through how to move forward. Now, it's not always that he's given us the answer for where we are. It's not always going, oh, step by step, da, da, da. But if I go back and I look at what God's done in my life, I can get a pretty good map for where I need to head. The first one is trust. I always need to trust God. This detour happens. I get turned off my course. I don't know what to do. And instead of panic, I need to go to trust. I need to say to myself, self and God, <laughs> you got this. God always has it, right? He's always He's brought me through before. The classic gospel song, he'll do it again. What he did before, he'll do again, right? Sometimes we want to take all that, we call it baggage. You ever notice that? You know, we put luggage in the trunk. The rearview mirror stays closed, but the luggage goes in the trunk. But you need your baggage. You need the good baggage, not the negative things that we hold on to, not the, not the things God's brought us through that we should slough off, you know, not the things that we should get rid of. But we need to keep those nuggets that God has taught us, and we need to keep them close. We need to keep them like a locket on our heart where he did this in this situation or this in this situation. Remember, I told you all before, after my house fire, my dad walked up to me and he said, I know this looks bad now, but God's going to use this. So many times since then, I've said to myself, God is saying to me, I know you don't know what I'm doing now, but you'll see it when I've done it, right? Now, some things I may not see until heaven, and even then I may not see them. A lot of people say, the first thing I'm going to do when I get to heaven is, is ask this question, da, da, da. It's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise Jesus. That's what I feel like we'll be doing is praising Jesus. But I do look back and go, you did this here and you did this here. And I learned this here, and I know to head in this direction based on this situation. And more than that, I trust you. It's the trust and knowing that God's in control. It, it's been hard for me. I, I feel like God's talking to me about this now because of the situation I'm in. I'll share a little bit. I get a little vulnerable with these things. And I guess because I love you guys, I don't. I just tell you because we all go through it. 
But with mom being gone, I've had a lot of questions. Not that I'm questioning God and his plan. God has a plan. I understand his plan. I don't always like the, the path of it. I don't like all the ways it makes me travel. But I know he has a plan. And so with mom being gone, it's been very interesting because dad has had to have open heart surgery, triple bypass surgery. And I was with him last week and the whole time I'm there, I'm thinking, what would mom do? What would mom do? What would mom do? And I even thought, God, why would you take her now? She is the perfect person for this. She knows how to take dad, take care of dad better than any of us knows. Why would you take her now? Why would she not be here? Ask these questions. Not that I'm go, not that I'm angrily going, I can't believe he took her. That's not what I'm saying. Mom is, is reaping her reward. But I think of all the people to take care of dad, who better to do it than mom? And God tells me, you have the same abilities. You have the same care for him, the same love for him. You can do for him just like she did. And I look at my family and what my family's doing and the neighbors and the friends and the church and how they're rallying together to take care of him. And I see all the beauty in this moment. But I still want to go back to, why would you take her now? And I know God has a plan. And maybe one day he'll clue me in and maybe he won't. And maybe I'm learning how to myself bring out what mom's taught me. Maybe God's helping me to cultivate what he taught me through mom, right? I don't know, but it is a it is a situation where we get into. And I'm sure you've been in these situations where you're like, of all the times to do this, why now? Why do you do this thing? Why, why have you taken this from me? Why have you sent me on this path? Why have you shut that door to me? Many times we have to look back and go, okay, back in the day you sent me here and I learned this. Or back in the day you opened this door and I learned this. Or back in the day I had this tragic thing happen and you taught me that. And we can go through those things and learn more about where we're headed based on our past. You may not think that the rearview mirror is very pivotal, but it is. It is very important to know what's happened behind you, what is happening, what has happened. It's very important to bring those that those nuggets of knowledge with you. Think about this. If you're wanting to bring somebody to Jesus, it's more than just telling them what Jesus has done for them on the cross. It's more than that. It's also telling them what God and Jesus have done for you in your life. Because people aren't so concerned about what you know as much about what you care about them about. And so when you can say, I've been there and God did this for me. I went through that and God did that for me. And they can see how you have faith and you trust that God did and God will. This helps people to understand who God is and who Jesus is. I know we think that if we just explain what Jesus did for, for all of us, you know, what he did for all of us by going to the cross, if we think we just explain that, that's enough. And it is enough. It's, a, it's the only thing that is enough. But many times you've got to say, and let me tell you what he's done for me since. Let me tell you how he brought me through this. Let me tell you how he brought me out of that, right? So you got to sometimes live in the rear view, even when you're witnessing. And I think most of the time when you're witnessing, I know um, I listen to Vince talk about God or say things to people about God. And he'll, his favorite thing to say is God doesn't waste our experiences. What you're going through right now, he's teaching you something. And we go back to that scripture. Jesus said, what I do now, you do not know, but you will understand later. It's the same thing with all of us. I hope today spoke to you living in the rear view. I know that it seems a little weird to, to uh, think of it like that, but it's true. We need, to, we need to look back on what God's done. We need to get our footing from that. It needs to be our foundation. They need to stack up underneath us like cordwood, right? We need to just stack all of those, those nuggets of wisdom in all of the situations he's brought us through, and it becomes a foundation of you and God, what you've been through and how he's going to take you through. So then when that detour hits, we don't always have to be upset about it. I've learned more through detours than I ever learned through living what I thought was the way I should go, right? It's in that moment when the detour happens when I go, oh, what are we doing here? I feel like I'm in a detour now. I may not be. This may be. It is a detour. It is a detour because I'm living my life. I'm living my life. And then a pivotal person is, is gone. And so then I have to make all these decisions based on what God taught me through her, right? So life starts to change. It's a detour. And I'm feeling myself, I'm feeling myself navigate it. Um, I thought about this yesterday. I had a really, really hard missing mom day yesterday. The seasons make it hard. Um, really hard missing mom day yesterday. And I remember, and God said this to me. He said, you remember that day when you were in the waiting room at ICU? 
and you found out she was gone and how you felt in that moment. And I remember, I remember thinking life has ended. I remember thinking, now I'm just going to, I'm just going to exist. And then yesterday with my emotions up and down, up and down, God said, can you see how that's not what I have for you? Can you see how just existing is not what I have for you? I want you to have an abundant life when you had her and without her, right? We learn from what we, from what God teaches us. And I go back to the rear view and I had a moment where I thought, um, I'm sorry, y'all, I told you I didn't want Bible said to be about grief, but it's what I'm going through. I remember I was sitting in my brother's driveway after we left the hospital that night and I had to call my aunts, her sisters, and uh, tell them. And I talked to each one of them. And I remember thinking, life will never be the same for any of us. And even they said to me, I don't know how we're going to live without Ed, you know. And I'm thinking, but that's not what God's plan is for us. His plan is for us to live. And I believe that mom's plan would be for us to live. And so, though we're going to have these rope, we're going to go over speed bumps, right? A lot of driving analogies today. We're going to go over speed bumps. I'm going to be able to look back. And all the things God taught me through my mother and be able to navigate wherever I'm going from here with that, right? I challenge you to do it. Spend some time in the rear view. Start writing the stuff down. If you forget things, I forget things, but I'm also a terrible writer. Make notes on your phone. You know, you can go, I better not say, you can go, hey, whatever, and they'll write it for you. <laughs> if I say it, my phone will mess up. But, you know, do it that way. Make notes through audio, Record your voice. Kids would love to have your voice recorded teaching them things, right? Record the things you've been through so you can fall back on them later. Thank you guys so much for being here today. We're going to go to God in prayer. I'm so grateful we have these opportunities. I know I've been slack. It's not slack. It's just I don't want to bring you grief every single time. And when God gives me a nugget that I feel like I can teach you that's not grief related, that's what I want to bring you. And a lot of you guys have said I need to discuss grief. And I feel like I will when I have a handle on it. Right now, I don't really have a handle on it. Some days are good. Some days are bad. Um, and I don't have a handle yet. I feel like I'm getting a little better. We'll see. But um, let's go to God together. God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for the nugget of living in the rear view. Thank you for all the things you've brought us through and what you've taught us. Thank you for the people you've brought into our lives that lead us and guide us into your path. God, thank you for the brilliant people who know every bit of your word and teach it to us. God, thank you for those who are dedicated to open the word for us day after day, week after week. Thank you, God, for our pastors that worked so hard to keep their communities going, especially through this time, God. I pray special blessing on churches today that you'll just be very real in those locations. Your spirit will fill the buildings and everyone will fill you. God, I pray for those watching wherever they may be that you'll fill their heart and their minds with thoughts of you and what you've done in the past for them. Remind them of who you are and your abilities to do the impossible and how when we hit a detour, you know exactly the direction to go. God, thank you so much for everybody who comes here and listens to these devotions. I pray that you'll take something that was said today and work it to someone's favor. I thank you again for everything you do, and I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, I hope you have a blessed Sunday, and until next time, bye now.